It's the middle of summer and those tomatoes, they are at peak perfection. So what do you do? You pick them, slice them, and maybe season them with salt and pepper, or perhaps you just dress them and add them to a salad. But do you cook them? No, you don't, because you know that that is the equivalent of culinary blasphemy. Or is it? <laughs> All right, Bridget. <laughs> Becky's here and she's gonna tell us about a great dish that might just convince us otherwise. I hear you're a little bit skeptical. <laughs> just, just a little bit. But this is actually a really nice way to use up tomatoes when they're plentiful, when you have those great tomatoes. And cooking actually intensifies the nice fresh tomato flavor. All right, we shall see. All right. <laughs> so a tomato gratin, it combines fresh tomatoes. Mm. There's bread to soak up all those delicious juices from the tomatoes that they release during cooking. And then a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top, which will add some nice flavor and texture. Nice. So before we get to the tomatoes, we're actually going to start with our bread topping. Okay. We're gonna make some nice croutons to go on top. Now, this is a really nice artisan style baguette. We tried making this recipe with sandwich bread. We also tried sort of squishy supermarket baguette. Both of those got really mushy during gotcha. cooking. That's a really common problem with these. So you really want to take the time and find a nice baguette that has some chew to it. This is six ounces of baguette cut into three quarter inch cubes okay. here. And I have a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil that we're going to heat over medium low heat. We're using a good amount of oil here. The tomatoes themselves are lean. They're completely fat free. Right. So this will add some nice richness. Nice. Okay, so our oil is shimmering. Let's go ahead and add our bread to the pan. So we want to stir and get these nice and coated in the oil and we're going to cook these for about five minutes until they get all nice and brown and toasty. And Becky mentioned earlier why it's important to use an artisan baguette. Take the time to find that instead of that really low quality supermarket baguette. We've done a little test to show you. These are two different types of baguette. This one here is straight from the supermarket. It kind of looks like sandwich bread. Now they both soaked up water very well, but look what happens when I just start to work with these. Yeah, it just mushes, falls apart, and it really expels all of those juices. I don't know what that is, but it's not good. Now this is the artisan loaf here, and you can see it also expels some juices, but it's retaining its shape here. So imagine if this was in our tomato gratin, these would still be nice intact pieces of bread. This would be, well, like tapioca pudding, not good. All right, it's been about five minutes. We can actually hear that this bread is ready, right? Hear that noise? <laughs> yes, very, very crisp. <laughs> yes, that's how we want it. All right, so we'll kill the heat there and put these back in the bowl. So now we'll get to the tomatoes. So we need three pounds of tomatoes and you really wanna use the best ripest in season tomatoes okay. you can find for this recipe. It will work with supermarket vine ripened tomatoes, but the gratin just won't be quite as flavorful. Gotcha. You don't wanna use plum tomatoes. Those are actually relatively dry and they won't have enough juices. So the gratin will bake up sort of dry. We'll just cut our last tomato here. We wanna take out the core and then we're gonna cut it the same size as the bread, about three quarter inch pieces. Okay, so our tomatoes are ready to go there. Beautiful. And now we're going back to our skillet. Okay. So we'll get some low heat and two more tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. We don't need to wipe out the pan or anything. Nope. Everything's going back in. It's all going to the same place. We just want to get that a little bit heated up. And that pan was pretty hot, so that shouldn't take very long. Right. So now I'll add three cloves of thinly sliced garlic. Okay. I like where this is going. Oh, yeah. Garlic and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. As soon as it hits the pan, you start to get that really nice smell. We're going to cook this for 30 to 60 seconds. We just want the outer edges of the garlic to start to get golden here. I like that you use sliced garlic instead of minced garlic, so you're gonna get a more subtle garlic flavor. Yeah, I was hoping you'd pick up on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's smelling amazing. I think that is our signal that we can add our tomatoes. So in goes our tomatoes. That's three pounds, that's a lot. Now I have two teaspoons of sugar and that's gonna just bring out the natural sweetness that the tomatoes have. And then a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. And now we'll just increase the heat to medium high. We want to cook this for eight to 10 minutes until the tomatoes release enough juices so that they're mostly submerged. Okay. We're gonna really concentrate those juices and evaporate a few of them too so the gratin isn't too watery. I see, okay. And how long? Eight to 10 minutes. All right. <sighs> Heavenly smell. You're taking a nice deep inhale. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so you can see quite a bit of those juices have come out. It's starting to smell, like you said, really good in here. Mm -hmm. The tomatoes are all cooked. I'm going to turn the heat off. So now we're going to add some of our bread. I took out three cups of the bread and I'm leaving one cup behind just for now. Okay. I want to mix in 
most of the bread, it's going to create a really nice, soft, almost bread pudding-like mm. kind of texture when it soaks up some of those juices. So I'm going to stir those in. So we want to get all this bread completely coated in those juices. OK, so now I'm pressing down with my spatula. I really want to get all those pieces underneath so they can soak up those delicious juices. It is like a bread pudding. It is. OK, and then I have the one cup left over. And I'm just going to scatter these over the top. Now these will bake up nice and crunchy so we have some, some nice contrast on top. The gratin, part of gratin. Oh, mais oui. And now I just want to press these down just a tiny bit, just so they don't go anywhere, just right on top. OK, and now our final touch is 3 quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese that's going to be salty and nutty. It's going to brown. I mean, a thing of beauty. Yes. OK, so we're going to bake this in a 350 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes. After 30 minutes, I'm going to go in with a spatula and loosen it around the edges just to loosen any crust and let any juices come up. This is not going to break down and turn into a sauce. We're not going to stir it. It's relatively low heat, so we're okay. still going to have some nice intact pieces of tomato. OK, no tomato sauce. No, I okay. guarantee. All right. <sighs> oh, wow. Ooh, that smells good. Bubbling and brown. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. All right, so that was 45 minutes. It smells amazing. Now, you'll see it's a little bit jiggly right now. See mm -hmm. when I shake it? Oh, yeah. So we're going to let this cool for 15 minutes, and it will set up a little bit. So it's important to let it cool. So I'm going to leave this towel on the handle here so we remember not to touch it. We don't burn ourselves. OK, so it's been about 15 minutes, and you can see the jiggle is mostly gone. So before we dive in, I'm going to prepare just a little bit of fresh basil. We need about two tablespoons here. And it's nice to chop basil at the last minute yes. so it stays super fresh. It'll turn sort of uh, dark and discolor otherwise. That smells incredible. Oh my gosh, I know. It's one of my favorite smells. So I'm just rolling the leaves up a little bit here. It makes them a little bit easier to chop. And we'll go mm. through them in one direction. This is a pretty rustic dish. It doesn't have to be fancy at all. And that looks close to two tablespoons. Ugh. Just give that a nice sprinkle over the top. Wow. As soon as they hit that hot tomato and hot cheese on top, you can smell that basil. That's gorgeous. Ooh, all right. That's it. That's right? it. OK, let's, no more waiting. Let's dive in. Oh, yes. And you serve it like a bread pudding, too, nice and scoopy. That's right. There you go. All right. So you do see pieces of tomato in there. And I wasn't sure if you were being completely truthful with me. You didn't trust me? Well, <laughs> I always trust you, but I know summer tomatoes. They just want to fall apart. Yeah. But really, I think the bread in there absorbed enough of that juice so the tomatoes weren't actually stewing in their own juices for the entire time. Exactly. All right. Mm. Really, really. I mean, you're right. The tomatoes concentrated down. A little bit of sweetness was released, mm -hmm. very seasoned. I love these bits of bread. They're kind of like uh, little dumplings. Yes, that's it. Soaked full of tomato juice. Mm -hmm. They kind of mm -hmm. expand with all the juices. You did everything to bring out the best of the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You treated them very simply, just chopped them, and you had that oil and the bread, let them stew in that, but you didn't add a lot to the pan. You weren't trying to mask that flavor of tomato. It's really is incredibly elegant. Yes, well, for an elegant lady, <laughs> an elegant dish. <laughs> I love that last minute flourish of basil. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. I couldn't invest for anything more, except maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. This beautiful summer tomato gratin starts with bread cubes toasted in a skillet. Cook garlic and oil, then add tomatoes, sugar, and salt, and cook them until the tomatoes are submerged in their juices. Off heat, stir in three cups of the bread cubes and arrange the remaining bread on top. Sprinkle with Parmesan and bake until bubbling. Cool, top with basil and serve. So there you have it from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, a symphony of summer. It's the best summer tomato gratin. This would be perfect with grilled anything. Oh, I know, right? Or just even just by itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.